Hello, and welcome back to Song Surveys on Sofas with Superheroes, the subseries. So last week was a new song, and as much as I would have loved to do a new Blink-182 song this uh, week, it was their album is so good. It's old song week, so I've got to go with that. Anyway, um, so the thing about this band, which is just heartbreaking, is I got into them pretty late in their game and they released this new album in 2016 and I was so excited. I was like, yes, they're gonna go on tour after this release, I can't wait. They released this album and then they're like, yep, bye, we're no longer a band, don't ask us, don't talk to us about it, it's happening, it's done, the decision is made, there's nothing you can do. So that was really sad and again, I was so pumped to see this band, especially play this song in particular and a few of their other songs and then their new album was really, really good. And then they were just like, nope, we're done. So that was kind of disappointing. But anyway, let's get into the song. So the song is All the Friendly People by Funeral Suits. And if you've never seen the video, uh, it's actually really interesting. I think that it is almost like kind of, it's interesting. Um, but the things that I love about it is there's like a huge contrast of color between um, the two characters and even just like the setting, which is um, for the most part on a beach. And just like the creepy mask that the main character wears and also the movements of the main character, which are like over exaggerated. I think it was a really smart choice to make that happen. And it, you know, goes with the music as the movements are being made. So definitely an interesting video. I definitely would um, advise caution because it is kind of startling maybe, but really interesting video for sure. So let's get into the song itself. So this is probably the first song that I've talked about in this sub series that has a really, really long instrumental opening. So the instrumental opening is about 45 seconds long and it opens first. I love the music. It's like you get these like quick little notes again. I love those quick little notes. So at first it opens there's like one background note with quicker notes on top of that. And then about 15 seconds in, the percussion comes in for about another 30 seconds. That's so like where that 45 seconds comes from. So the music changes and there's like a long cymbal crash for the going into the lyrics. And then the melody changes as well. So the very first, the verses are very long, so in my head slash when I was reading the lyrics online, they were kind of separated into, I'm going to say thirds, and so there's um, the first half of the third, and then the second half of the third, and then obviously the second third, which has their first half and their second half. So that's how I'm going to be talking about the verses, so sorry if it's a little bit confusing, but I'm going to try and keep it as clear cut as I can. So for the first half of the first third of the verse, <laughs> Uh, I really love the line, colors burnt into my eyes, life for you is shades of gray, help me, help me find my way. So I love that first part. I love the idea that colors were burnt into this person's eyes, so it wasn't necessarily a choice of theirs, it was forced upon them. But then I also really like the idea that this shades of gray is something help me help me find my way if we're talking about my way back to your life in shades of gray so are we talking about and what does that mean shades of gray a life of shades of gray are we talking about a normal life a boring life a life with maybe less emotion because they're all just kind of neutral colored i don't know i just really like that concept and thought that that idea was pretty cool um, however, I should let you know that so after the help me help me find my way the very next line which is technically part of that second half of that third is the next part does talk about um, being lost and never found so it could be related to that but if it's not related to that I really do like the concept of I wasn't given a choice and these colors are burned into my eyes and you are still living this life in the shades of gray. I Help me find my way back there. So I, I do like that, but then obviously also connecting, help me find my way, I've been lost. I mean, that also works super well too. So 
either way, those lines totally work for me, but I definitely, again, really like the idea of these colors not having a choice in it. So I think that that's really interesting because usually you think, oh, colors are great and everyone really enjoys seeing color and it's beautiful and it creates all these like wonderful, beautiful things. But this person is saying like, well, I, you get to leave this life in shades of gray and I was forced upon me. These colors were forced upon me. So I really like that. I think that was kind of a cool concept. So the music from the beginning of the song comes back a third of the way, right? So after that, two halves of the first third <laughs> in the first verse. So complicated. So I really love the first part of the second third of the verse. Take me, take me far away from the city's soul decay. City's soul decay. <laughs> so I really love the image of what that would look like, uh, especially because you know, a city's soul to me isn't the building. So I'm not in my head picturing these crumbling buildings. As a matter of fact, I'm picturing the opposite, especially given that the next half of this third of the verse talks about skinny jeans, talks about sunglasses, talks about like the fashion, talks about how overhyped everything is and generic. So I actually in my head am seeing this like shiny clean city and really it's the quality of people that's decaying. So I really, again, love the ability to kind of play around with what a city's soul really is. And I feel like a lot of the time it could be the people. So I think that that's an interesting way to have presented it. They're not talking about the buildings crumbling and decaying. In my opinion, they're talking about more of the people and how, you know, they're just declining and they're kind of ruining away in this city. So I really like that. I also love the next two lines which are hid away till I was 18, only saw colors on the TV screen. So I love, love, love that they brought the colors back, especially again, because, you know, you think like screens and burning of the eyes. So is it that this person was watching the TV too closely for 18 years? Or is it potential that once this person was kind of let out of their overprotective home for 18 years they suddenly experienced all this color and now it's burned into their eyes so I really love that connection I love that they kind of went back to it in maybe a less obvious way because it's kind of distant it's not immediate right but then I do really like that it does come back and I mean the word color is used again so if you're relating just the words themselves I, I love that that was in there and I think that that was really cool and again I do kind of I have that question is it because of the screen or is it because suddenly after 18 years you're allowed out into the world with all these emotions and colors and things and now all of a sudden you know they've been burned into your eyes so really cool, really liked that part of that verse. So then the lines come up with, I asked you why people die. You said we all had a design. And so this is a really interesting part. So for pretty much the entire song, other than this one, two lines of this song, the words aren't held pretty much at all. It's all just very, like the word is said and then we move on to the next word. This is the only part in the song where the word design is held. And I really think that's super interesting because that makes me think that the word design for the artist could not be changed. It was like a non-negotiable, I'm making it work no matter what, even if I have to hold it, which doesn't sound similar to the previous parts of the verse and the, the verse that comes next. So I really, really love that they chose the word over the smoothness of the song. Not that it's not smooth. The word design works really well, but it's just the only word that's held longer. So I think that that response, you said we all had a design, makes me think that either someone in the singer's real life said that at some point and so that was a very important thing for this to be in the song or that was like exactly the message they wanted to convey so I really like that choice I thought it was really good plus when you sing that part a little bit differently it definitely adds and makes the verse not sound just like a humdrum right so you get this kind of like ooh, that that was different so I really liked that and again I, I think the just like the concept of it too is interesting right so that you know, this person is kind of talking now about fate, right? There's, we all have a design. So you maybe don't have 
eh, I don't know, just interesting concept, right? So it brings in that whole idea of is it fate versus choice? If it's all like a design, what does that mean? So I thought that was interesting. So then the last two lines of the first verse are, I said I was into you, you said you were into me. So this is pretty important for the chorus. And I mean, you know, just like a cute line in general. So they clearly are now, this is definitely in my head where the relationship part of this is very clear. I said I was into you, you said you were into me. So now we have this reciprocal thing going, but then the chorus kind of continues with that. And we'll talk about that right now. So um, the music definitely changes. It drops a little bit and changes for the chorus. So the first part talks about how this person is cold, right? They say things like, you never answer on the phone, you have a heart of stone. Um, but then I really like the line, looks like this love wasn't meant to last. So you immediately get that, oh, okay, so this person wasn't actually really into you maybe, and you are now just seeing that. So then the next part of the chorus uses the line, reap just what you sow, followed by asking where their garden grows. So I thought that was pretty clever. I really kind of liked that especially because clearly the singer is still kind of hopeful in a way like so we're we're reaping what we sow I mean what where's your garden again like I could just come over and check it out so I thought that was kind of cute um and super clever as well so then after that the lines that I really love in this second part of the chorus is you said in time the pain would pass looks like the end is here at last and so I might just be super nitpicky and let me know if you think that I am being nitpicky, but I really love that the order is the way it is. In my head, the order should be switched, okay? So the end is here at last. You said in time the pain will pass, right? Look, this isn't working out. I know that it's gonna hurt you, but honestly, just give it some time and you'll feel better. But that's not what they're saying in the song. Instead, I feel like they're saying, look, this has not been going well. There's been a lot of pain and, and it should be getting better with time. And, you know, like even after this, it will get better with time. But I think this is the end. So I kind of like that this pain in my head, based on the order in which the lyrics were delivered, kind of already existed. And now the person, the singer is finally realizing, oh, like this is the beginning of the end. So I really like that. I thought that was really... Um, quite an interesting way to present it and also definitely again this is this is purposeful right they use that word design back in that first verse because that was the message that they wanted to give so I feel like putting those in that order was not an accident and so I like that I think that was a really cool choice and yeah so I definitely like that so then there's this musical transition and it builds back to the verse music but the whole verse from start to finish has that more full sound so it didn't go back to the original where that first third was in that like less full sounding music this next verse is full sounding music from start to finish so the first half of the first third the whole thing is just super fantastic so the lyrics are burn burn like a star burn a hole in every heart strung out on a trail of blood who knew the stars were not enough? So I think that the use of burn and stars in this is pretty interesting because this is pretty much the first time that words have been repeated so often in the same third of the verse. So I really like the idea of burning like a star in terms of, especially when you think about stars, like once they are kind of dying, right? They kind of like explode and then implode. Um, so I think that that's an interesting concept. So what was the idea behind that, right? Is it that it's just burning like our sun, it's just chilling, burning hot, lots of, you know, heat? Or are we talking about burning like a star when it's at its end? So I think that that was interesting for sure and would kind of love to know where the artist was going with that. So then burn a hole through every heart, right? You get this like now more physical concept where obviously if you burned someone's heart, there would be blood, especially if it's just a hole and you know, the rest of the body is now bleeding out. So I like that. And then I really love that they bring back stars for who knew the stars were not enough. So I think that that was really cool. So is it not enough to actually like kill somebody even though this blood is trailing like I don't know I just love that idea so I thought that was really cool I really like that they brought that back um 
sorry. <laughs> so then the first half of the second third is just fantastic. I really, this second verse overall was just so incredible, but these parts in particular. So you get this whole first half of the first third and then the first half of the second third. So really like obviously the first half of the thirds. So the line is purge the past and waste my mind, leave no scent or trace behind. One day when you bury me, when I wake up, what will I see? So first of all, I think the idea of purging someone's past and meaning that they will then waste their mind is really kind of sweet because in my head, it's like you are such a big part of my past that if you were to purge yourself from my past, my mind would be wasted, right? Like there would be nothing left. My mind would be totally done. So I really like that. And I thought that that was kind of like, bittersweet, I guess. <laughs> um, also love the distinction of not leaving the scent behind, not just a trace, but also a scent. It really makes me think of the movie Someone Like You with um, Ashley Judd, Greg Kinnear, and of course, Hugh Jackman. So anyway, that's, I know it's a random thing, but she really like talks about removing her, um, you know, olfactory organs just so that she doesn't have to remember the guy that she's in love with. But anyway, um, so I also really love the ambiguity of the next line, when you bury me. So I kind of pictured this in two different ways, physically burying you, right? Which then in my head makes me think when I wake, what will I see? So are you going to see heaven? Are you going to see hell? Um, and like, what does your heaven look like, right? Is it that pearly gates sort of heaven? Or is it more of like, I'm going to see you in my heaven because you are what I would want. Or if it's figuratively in terms of like, when you've buried me, you are like totally cutting off all contact with me. When I wake up, what am I going to see? The empty side of a bed, potentially a new like living space or even a new city that you've moved to. So I, I do kind of like that me as a listener, I'm able to kind of play around with that line. I mean, listen, I know that burying you figuratively might be kind of a stretch, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there is some value in thinking that, especially because again, it's like every time you listen to the song, you kind of have this, I, I at least get this different image and kind of change what that means to me. So I really like that line. I thought that was cool. So then the next two parts, First, they talk about um, being underground and digging. So first for fire, and then they dig for sound. So again, I like the idea of digging, especially if you're digging for fire. I wonder if that was supposed to be a connection to like digging towards hell. So you're like all these sins that you're committing. And then, so then that next part, so that's like the first, th that's the first half of that third. And then the next half of that third talks about crawling through the dirt. So again, if digging for fire is kind of connected to that hell committing all these sins, I feel like, especially that it's after that, crawling through dirt is you're like, wait a minute. Now I've dug my hole and I want to get out, right? So I kind of am regretting or changing or wanting to reverse my decisions. So again, I really like that concept and would really think it was interesting to know if that was, if I'm on the right track or not. So the last two lines of this second verse are just like fantastically chilling. I love it. And I just, I've been thinking about these last two lines for like so long, especially since now doing this and really thinking about the lyrics as a whole. But anyway, so the last two lines are, wake me up from my sick dream, a requiem for this dead scene. So I had to look up the word requiem just to really remind myself what that means. And it's basically like the first definition is a funeral for the dead. So I, or like a remembrance for the dead. So I really love that the singer is asking to be woken up from this dream, right? Not nightmare dream. And it's a sick dream. Okay. But so I think it's interesting that this requiem, this remembrance of the dead is so much worse than the actual dead scene that is like real life. So I really, really like that. I think it has a lot of layers and a really a lot of potential to kind of be um, analyzed and looked at and 
really thought about and what does that mean. So definitely interesting concepts for sure. And again, especially if you take the Requiem part to mean a funeral, you know, you're, you're picturing this church and we just talked about digging, you know, for hell and all these sins, kind of, again, if I'm on the right track. So it's just super interesting line, really like it a lot. So then the music changes again for the chorus. There's nothing different about the chorus this time. The music is the same. Um, after that, there's this musical transition where you get just the drums with that occasional one note, which happened before earlier in the song too. So I really kind of like that. Um, but this time there's three O's. So it's like O, 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 O with this long one. So at first the music changes and you get um, four repetitions of this O, 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 O. And then after that, the sound becomes more full and you get four more repetitions of that. So I thought that was a really nice choice. Definitely switched it up a little bit, made that musical trans transition a little bit more interesting. Um, then we go back into this full sounding music for the verse. And it repeats the first half of the first third of the first verse. <laughs> so basically the first four lines of the song are repeated and I know that made it sound way more complicated than I needed to but yeah so the first half of the first third of the first verse basically the first four lines are repeated. Um, and so after that there's only one more third of a verse. So the line starts off by he asks like mother can you help me? now and then the line is because i've been drowning in the sound so i like love the visual of that because for me i don't really have it pinned down yet so sometimes i see like a, i definitely always consistently see somebody in a pool of sorts but sometimes i feel like is it just like sound waves that i'm seeing in this pool that this person is like grasping and trying to get out of or is it images of what make sounds? So like a truck, people laughing, people talking. Or is it just words, like sound words? So I don't know, or even words of things that make sounds, laughing, or is it like ha ha ha? I'm not really sure what I see, but again, I love that because I feel like every time I listen to the song, I see a different image slightly and that kind of intrigues me. Like, what does that mean, drowning in the sound? Um, so I like that line and, and again I, I like that it's kind of towards the end. Anyway, after that the next two lines, the last two lines of the song, are pretty fantastic as well. So lying on the motorway, writing songs and wasting away are the last two lines and I know I didn't mention this before but in the chorus the singer talks about um, looking for this person by the underpass so I feel like that's a connection, right? You have this underpass which you think of like highway things and then you know underpass and then motorway is obviously a roadway so that's super interesting and i i do like that again they kind of they only have two choruses and the verses are super long and they decide to put the motorway way in right at the end so i thought that was an interesting choice and then i also think that writing songs and wasting away is kind of like heartbreakingly sad like that you, but also kind of beautiful in a way. Cause in my head, right, writing songs, it's sad that that could be like what you are, you're wasting away because you're doing that. But also like, it makes me think of every song you write, you're giving a piece of yourself away. So you are like literally putting pieces of yourself into these songs and therefore making yourself waste away little by little at like, so with each song you write, you waste away more and more. So again, that image is kind of interesting to me. And I think it's an interesting way to end the song. So then the music fades for a couple seconds and that's it. Overall, really love the song. A lot of really interesting lyrics that really make me think. I know this is a really long video and it's a really long song, <laughs> um, but it's a really good song. And again, the video is super interesting and I just, I wish this band was still around so bad. I would love to see them live. I'm really hoping for an anniversary tour at some point, especially if they did the album that this song is on in particular, because this is the album I know best. So that would be awesome. Although let me just tell you if they ever said, hey, we're gonna go on an anniversary tour for a specific album, I would listen to it nonstop just to see them and make sure I really knew what was going on. Anyway, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Have you ever heard the song? Is this the first time hearing the song or of this band? Let me know what you think in the comments, suggest songs, anything, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.